Ready, Kelly? I'm waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> Go. Well, great to see you all. Welcome to Mission Connection 2021 breakout session entitled Teaching Women and Families Grassroots Community Development Education. We are excited to share with you how God is working in communities through community development education, also known as CHE or Community Health Evangelism, to transform the hearts and lives of individuals, families, and communities around our world. We'll be sharing principles with you that can help all of us wherever we work. I'm Maggie and I'm a nurse midwife, nurse practitioner, and I work with Medical Ambassadors International as the Women's and Family Health International Coordinator. And here is my colleague and co-presenter, Kelly Pick. Hi there. Mission Connection has always been a highlight of my year. And today in the midst of COVID, I'm really thrilled that we can be together at least in this format. Uh, I've been a nurse since 1982, primarily in obstetrics and neonatal intensive care. And I also worked several years as a nurse educator, uh, teaching nursing students and hospital staff. I'm now a certified lactation consultant, which is my passion. I'm also the Women's and Families uh, Health International Assistant Coordinator with Maggie at Medical Ambassadors, helping write curricula and training trainers here in the US and across the world. So at Medical Ambassadors, we build relationships one person at a time um, with some of the world's most vulnerable people. And together we work to heal communities. We're an equipping organization, which means we train local people as well as workers from other mission groups. Providing training and mentoring in community health evangelism or CHE is our passion. We work in collaboration with a group called the Global CHE Network. We'd like to start out with a brief video to give you an overview of medical ambassadors. Oops. Instead of going into communities and giving them what we thought they needed, we entered bringing only questions. Asking the local leaders, what do you need to be happy and healthy? We let their answers guide our focus and together we started developing lessons on those topics. The lesson started off covering health issues, but then the communities wanted to know how to work together to solve their problems related to agriculture, literacy, family relationships, microenterprise, coping with disability, and so much more. Instructors taught learners how to solve their own problems, then those learners would go out and teach others how to become instructors. With this approach, education could be replicated at the grassroots level from one neighbor to another. For over 35 years, Medical Ambassadors International has been working to heal communities and transform lives. Jesus' ministry on earth revealed that he cares for the whole person. He was moved by people's spiritual and physical pain. We strive to follow the example Jesus set for holistic healing. We use a development process that suits the needs of the whole person, physical, spiritual, emotional, and social. We are equipping individuals to be independent workers and evangelists in their own communities. Would you like to learn how you can be involved? Join us today. So I have a question for you. Were you guys able to hear that good enough? Okay. It seemed a little quiet to me, so I just wanted to make sure. So we'd like to start out just with a quick poll to find out where you are in terms of knowledge about community health evangelism. So when the question comes up, I'm just gonna um, launch that. And just, just pick, pick your answer and We'll just give it a few seconds here. Oops, I think we're on the... Is it not showing? Oh yeah, we've got it. Yeah. Okay. Can you all see the poll? I still have zero of 16 voted. So have, have some of you voted? Oh, 14 of 16, I see. Oh. I don't know why that's happening. <laughs> okay, so let's see what our result is. 
Paula, do you do you have it? I mean, yeah. Okay. So it looks kind of split through all four. <laughs> um, okay. So it, so it looks like we all can learn something. We have some experts as well. So we'd Good. love to hear from you when we have our um, discussion time at the end. Yeah, I'm there not you sure. see it. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, uh, we'll move on. So most people look at our organization uh, name, Medical Ambassadors, and understandably think that we just do medical work, but that if you're not a doctor or a nurse or some other medical person, that it, this isn't the ministry for you. But this just really isn't the case. Although we did start out as a traditional medical mission over 40 years ago, the health workers um, with Medical Ambassadors International, or MAI as we call it, found that they were treating the same disease over and over and over again. And discovering community health education, or CHE, um, through a missionary to Uganda in 1989 brought a strategic shift to MAI's ministry as we began looking for the root cause of disease and poverty. MAI moved from treatment to prevention. As a result, CHE has been used to help communities all over the world to improve health physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, and more. CHE lessons are designed to be simple and transferable, easily used by local community volunteers who may or may not have had any formal education. So as you can see from these many categories, agriculture, appropriate technology, which means things such as water filtration, solar ovens, disability, environmental. There are CHE lessons available in a wide variety of subject areas, more than 5,000. New lessons are added and old ones are updated to meet the needs of various communities and people around the globe. The lessons are available in many languages. They are facilitated rather than being taught by an expert using questions to draw out participant knowledge. What is health? Is physical health all there is to it? Of course not. We know that many factors contribute to our well being as whole people. Che addresses physical, emotional, relational, spiritual, economic, environmental, and other influences on our lives, all of which we know God cares about. Now we'll give you an opportunity to experience a very shortened version of a lesson on one of our CHE principles, development versus relief. Man stood on the bank of a river, considering how he could cross. The river had a strong current and he didn't want to risk drowning. However, he had many good reasons to get to the other side. As he was thinking, a man with whom he was not familiar appeared and offered to take him across the river. The villager accepted the offer and hopped up on the back of the stranger. The stranger was strong and he was able to take the villager on his back as far as a small island in the river but was too tired to take him all the way across the river. The stranger said he was sorry, but he had to move on and wish the villager good luck. And there the villager was left to figure out how to find a way to either get back to the bank of the river from where he started or to get to the other side safely. So normally we would stop and talk about this, but let's go on and see what happens next. The comes to the bank of the river and wants to cross, but cannot because the current is still too strong and much too dangerous. A stranger appears and she asks him if he can take her safely across the river as she must get to see the doctor. He says he will not take her, but he can show her how he does it. Along the way, she sees her friend, all alone on the island in the middle of the river, and asks the stranger if he can help her friend too. The stranger tells her that he just showed her the way, and now it's up to her to show her friend how to cross.
She goes back to the island and explains to her friend how to get across the river. They were so happy to know how it could be done. In the future, both of the villagers were able to show others how to cross the river when the current rises and becomes too dangerous to cross. So what did you see? What just happened? What was the difference between the two ways of helping someone across the river? Unmute yourself and, and tell us what you think. Any thoughts? The first example, the villager didn't learn anything and wasn't able to um, like continue or repeat the process on his own. But in the second example, the villager learned something and was able to pass that on to others as well. Excellent, thank you. What do you think this tells you about how CHE or community health evangelism works? Anybody? They give you the tools to do things for the Lord. Great, great. So instead of doing it for them, we're helping people to help themselves with long-term solutions for themselves. So let's look at the core value of, values of CHE. As we previously discussed in CHE, we focus on the whole person. Prayer is, of course, extremely important in our work, as we know it is the Holy Spirit who brings transformation to people's lives. Local ownership and using locally available resources are key to making lasting change. As people begin making changes that are important to them and that require them to use their own resources, they are much more likely to maintain the transformation, which makes it sustainable. Our goal is not to go in and make short-term changes that revert back to the way things were before. When community members take the lead, long-term positive change is much more likely. When people observe their neighbors experiencing positive changes, they wanna know what, what their neighbors have done to get this, these results. And the transformation spreads like wildfire. This is multiplication. CHE is very participatory and active as opposed to being more passive learning when a lecture style is used. This active approach does many things, including showing participants respect and acknowledging the collective wisdom of the group. As we train trainers who will then train others, they are becoming Christian servant leaders. And we are committed to working with the most vulnerable and marginalized people in societies as Jesus did. To illustrate some of these core values and how they impact communities, I'd like to tell you a story. There once was a village located on the top of a steep mountain. On a regular basis, as people were coming down the mountain, they would slip off the trail and fall to the valley below. A number of people were injured and some were even killed. A short-term team came to their village and saw this problem and wanted to do something about it. They thought about what they could do and then decided that the best thing would be to station an ambulance at the base of the mountain. Therefore, when a person fell, the driver could rush with the ambulance to pick him up and take him to the closest hospital 10 kilometers away. The people in the village were very excited about this idea. The short-term team went home and raised the funds for the ambulance, and the people at home were very excited that they could get involved and help. One day, the ambulance broke down, but the people ignored the problem until another person fell off the trail and needed the ambulance to be taken to the hospital, but there was no transport available. Then they became very concerned and went looking for the short-term team that had put the ambulance there. They complained that the team's ambulance had broken down and wanted to know why they didn't keep it, the vehicle in good repair. The team raised more money and sent it to them for it, for it to be fixed. However, the same problem happened several more times, again with the people coming to the team and wanting them to fix it. The short-term team finally decided that there were too many repairs required on the vehicle and they couldn't keep raising more money to fix it. They told the people it's their problem, the team had tried but could no longer help. 
The people felt sad about this, but did nothing. They were now back to the place they had begun. Representatives from the church diocese came and saw the problem and said they wanted to help. The diocese decided that what was really needed was a clinic at the foot of the mountain so that if somebody fell, they could get immediate medical care. The diocese then built the clinic and provided equipment and staff and drugs. The people were very happy that those who fell could now get immediate attention and not have to make the 10 kilometer drive to the other clinic. This worked well for a while, but eventually those working at the clinic wanted some time off. So the clinic was left unattended. The people went to the diocese and complained about the poor service that the clinic was providing and said the diocese had to give them better care. The diocese put in extra staff to cover during the holidays and several times the clinic ran out of drugs and the people complained about the poor care that the diocese was giving them. The diocese ran low on money and had to stop some of their operations to conserve their money. They decided to staff, stop staffing the clinic and providing drugs for it. And then they shut it down. People were very, very angry at the diocese. They didn't know what to do. The two ideas that the outsiders had done for them, the ambulance and the clinic, were no longer available and working. A respected man in the community said, let's talk about the real problem. They looked back at their original need, which was to somehow take care of those who fell off the path as they were traveling up and down the mountain to the village. The two solutions helped somewhat, but there were problems with each solution. As they talked, the respected man said, I had an idea when we first talked about the problem, but no one would listen to me. The outsider was going to do everything for us for free. My idea would have taken some work and some money on our part, so no one was interested in what I had to say. He then told them his idea, which was to build a fence along the trail to keep people from falling over the edge. It would take work on their part of the people and to cut the wood and the, for the fence to put it up. It would also take a little bit of money to put the fence posts in cement so they would last longer. The people responded with, that's a great idea, let's do it. So they raised the little money they needed and began to work. After several weeks, the work was done. Now, when someone slipped, the fence stopped them from falling over the edge to the valley below. After a few years, the wood began to rot, but instead of going to an outsider, they went and fixed the fence themselves. Now, instead of looking to the outside for help, they began to look to their own community for solving the problem. This one project gave them confidence that they could do things for themselves. Now, when someone from the outside came to give them something, they said, thank you, but if we think it's important, we'll do it ourselves. So unmute yourselves and, and just tell me what you think about this story. Any thoughts? Well, when like the ambulance or the clinic didn't work, they they said your ambulance, your clinic. And so it was ended up being the responsibility of the others. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, they to didn't take the ownership, did they? Yeah. Yeah. Good. What what do you think we can learn from that? What else? To have them be involved, not stand on the sidelines that would make them own it, own it too, have an ownership a part of it be partners exactly partners is right excellent yeah, and maybe taking an attitude of humility and uh and maybe um seeing that god can lead us to truly serve um through asking the community members to lead asking them first what, how they think the problem, what, it, what the problem is, how it can be solved. Right, excellent. Great. So as the mountain story illustrated, the local people are the best development workers in their own communities. So what do you see as a problem in this photo? Speak up and say what you think.
Pollution. See any problems? <laughs> Go ahead. Pollution. Say again. Pollution. Pollution. Yeah. There are no men washing clothes. <laughs> That's a good one, Chris. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so we would say those things and more. Contaminated water, what would be the solution, do you think? Some people might say building a well would be the way to do it. Um, you know, there are a lot of ideas. We might have a lot of ideas on what to do, but what if contaminated water isn't high on the list of the community's concerns? At least not yet. I know of a community in Central Asia whose first priority was their troubled youth. They were concerned about their kids. And one of their solutions was to build a soccer field. I'm sure some parents can relate to that. They worked together as a community to make it happen using materials that they had. After the soccer field was completed, they were ready to work on other issues, including clean water. Maybe someday having men wash the clothes, I don't know. <laughs> it was their decision, their priority, their timing and effort that made it happen, not direction from outsiders. And they could celebrate what they accomplished Sometimes we think the answer to solving problems is dumping a boatload of knowledge on people or lots of money. And then we wonder why the results don't last. Facilitating and standing alongside as local people take the lead and make their own decision has shown to be the better way. Honoring the dignity and insights of others who are also made in God's image and are gifted by him is powerful and can bring sustainable positive changes. Our educational method is described by the acronym LEPSIS, learner-centered, problem-posing, self-discovery, action-oriented, and spirit-guided. Here are some examples of, of lepsis in action. There are different models of CHE, but um, we'll show you here the diagram of a community-based model. It starts with a CHE training team that is invited to a community and they build relationships. As the community identifies their problems and desires to address them, a local committee is formed and trained by the trainers. This committee selects community members to be CHE volunteers, and these people are trained. These CHE volunteers don't have to be Christians. Our experience is that often about 80% of the CHE volunteers actually have become believers during their training. The CHE volunteers visit homes and share lessons with about five to 10 families. As the CHE volunteers share physical and spiritual lessons with their neighbors, lives begin to change. And discipleships are off, discipleship groups are often started, and small house churches come as well. Others see change and want what the neighboring community has, and it spreads. Kelly and I work with women and families, so here's a look into what God is doing with women in Ethiopia through CHE. <laughs> teaching a woman is teaching the nation. When you teach one woman, she will automatically teach from children to the neighbor to the village. It means it is training nation. I have a heart for women, women of all the world, but especially for the women in, in Ethiopia, especially deep in the village. First of all, we teach them how, how worthy they are because Ethiopia is a male dominant country. And I teach them to see themselves as God sees them how much God loves them and how much he have a plan for them too. And after they understand that, we teach them about family, how they can care, take care of their children, uh, and how it's important to raise their children in a healthy way, uh, personal hygiene, and on family value, relationship value. The CHE program is showing people what good health is. If there is a healthy family, there will be healthy church, if there is a healthy family, there will be a healthy community. So our main focus is to have a healthy, good 
family relationship. The creator of this work is God because I see lives change. When I see lives change, I am delighted because women of Ethiopia need all this. We are using the prayer that are coming from abroad, the support here to sustain this community to the next level and to the next generation. So let's talk about our Chase specialty, healthy women and families. There are many resources and curricula that have been developed to address the issues that women and families face. These are available to all who have been through the basic CHE training of trainers so that the trainer will understand how to use the materials effectively. Women's cycle of life includes physical lessons that cover topics such as hygiene, puberty to menopause and everything in between, including childbearing and other women's health concerns. While I was in Africa last year, I heard about a young girl in Ethiopia who had started her period and she knew nothing about what was happening to her. When she went to school, she asked her teacher about it and she was ridiculed by the teacher in front of the school. Tragically, she went home that day and killed herself. Simple education could have saved her life. That's such a horrible story, Kelly. Wow, I don't right hear that it just, uh. Zimbabwe is a country with incredible challenges these days. Lately, they have been experiencing a health worker strike with minimal availability of doctors, nurses, and midwives. And you can imagine that's even more horrible right now as they're experiencing a COVID surge. Though far from ideal, we have heard that local women are helping their pregnant neighbors with what they have learned about emergency care in childbirth through Women's Cycle of Life. There are many spiritual lessons integrated with the physical and relational lessons. Showing a woman how God sees her is a powerful thing for all of us and even more so in a culture where all of her life, a woman has been told that she is no more valuable than a cow. Imagine the change that begins in her thinking and in her heart as she begins to realize that like Ben, she was made in the image of God. She is loved and her life has great purpose. The changes that, are, that come are profound. There are many relational lessons related to marriage and family, as well as other lessons on human trafficking, abortion, and more. There also is a powerful one on mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationships. For example, in many places in Central Asia, when a son is married, he brings his wife to live with his parents and she serves his mother. All of her life, his mother has been waiting for that daughter-in-law to come relieve her heavy workload as she has spent much of her life in servitude to her mother-in-law. As you can imagine, this relationship is often not nurturing, but quite abusive. After experiencing the mother-in-law, mother daughter-in-law lesson, a woman that I know realized that although she had been fervently praying for her daughter-in-law to come to know her savior, she had been treating her like her culture had taught her, expecting hard work and service without compassion. She realized that she needed to treat her daughter-in-law like Jesus would, to honor God and to show her the love of God. It is a powerful lesson in her culture. Unfortunately, in some countries, it is common for men to treat their wives in ways they learn from their fathers with disrespect and routine beatings. When men learn how God values their wives and that like men, women are made in God's image, we have seen change occur in men's hearts. Even pastors in some places don't know or understand the teaching of God's word about marriage. Here you see a pastor on his knees, repenting and asking his wife's forgiveness for the way he has treated her. God has used couples trainings to transform and heal marriages. There are also lessons available to help women generate income. These women in Mesoamerica have learned ways to help keep their families afloat by selling handicrafts. So they're not only desperate or they're not only dependent on agriculture. When I was in training in Kenya, we were about to begin a lesson on business plan development which in my mind was going to be incredibly boring. I was paired with my new friend, a Kenyan woman who had a dream of developing a park in her community full of beautiful green spaces and activities 
where families could go and enjoy in peace and safety. They didn't have that. And it was an eye opener as to how empowering these lessons can be. Listen to these women's experiences with Women's Cycle of Life. And I would hesitate to Zabola de Mo and De Lutigir in the Derasen Sinegar, Siastamru, Exaber, Alisis Hakafulun, Tin de Ganadagmo, Sis Eluli, Sharon, in de Ganamai clan, Babi Mulu, Sis Eluli, Siabratatulin, Aizoshi, Silun, in Kelijo Chachin, Yakoshon lips and Kayurim, Yamatayano, Yak and Yano Kelikas on Natacho, I'll de Yam Yenyam with the lips at him, Skuruyas at Dick, in M. Demoras and yet a book. شنتو بهت وقت آورد ساعتیم و هایی وصل کو یار کوت سو نتای عال تو کم لسایت چیم استمر رالو سایت چیم دم آهن نگر این دو وصل رو بهت بهت یار کوت چنی میاد ابکو این دگان درگمو عال فلیم تو هم سایت هچ واریم میگویال سایت کیار سایت هات ابیم مسکر دیما به فکری زوری ای هنال فکری جابر نو یت باله به مسافت کدوسم به فکری زوری ای هنال که زی تمرت که تک بال کو بحالا بيتي أجي يفكرين نجد أستمرك. ليلة سويت إن ده ما يفلك. أون مساك سات كوت بالا منهم كال كوت بالا. آه إنه ود شالو خالد. بق أخذ سكر يتجاوز كوت يفلقون سات يتتأكم يجالو يستأكم كوت نوالو تي. بتعامي خلي بناو نرسم يا مسجنوت إن 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 بيت كريستان يالو سويتوج بزو تمرتي تك أبلو عالو. جنا يكتلي تمرتي كتلي يالو إنيم. عندي هو لتي سامين تبي نويل لتي يا تمر رستاجو okay go ahead anybody have any comments about that video <laughs> any thoughts on uh, anything surprising from that okay <laughs> We'll move on, but we have seen that Women and Healthy Families Che has made a difference throughout the world, saving lives, improving health, marriages, relationships, introducing people to faith in Christ and helping believers grow, promoting education for girls, decreasing poverty and bringing community transformation. The healthy birthing lessons focus on the prevention, early recognition and emergency first steps in the care of complications of pregnancy and childbirth. Through these lessons, mothers and babies' lives have been saved. And um, this should also be easily led by those who don't have a healthcare background. So you don't have to know a lot about birth to um, facilitate these lessons. Additionally, communities have responded by working on their challenges to get healthcare for their people. One of the programs we facilitate for improving the health of the family is called the first thousand days. From conception to about age two is about a thousand days. And these are crucial days in a person's life, laying the foundation for the child's future health and well being. According to a 2006 World Bank report, the health and nutrition of a nation's children can predict the future economy. This program works to optimize the baby's nutrition, brain development, as well as the development of a healthy home environment, engaging in prayer for the baby, spiritual growth of the family, and nurturing family relationships. As some of our international friends say, if you don't also teach our men, it's like clapping with one hand. We know that men have the power to greatly bless or to bring harm and even devastation to their families. Our Men Matter curriculum addresses the needs of men as they take on the role of being men that nurture and bless their families. And might even do laundry. <laughs> so the question is, does Che work? Yes, it does. Malnutrition and child mortality rates have often decreased dramatically with Che. Through training in microenterprise and business development principles, many communities are being lifted out of extreme poverty sometimes more than doubling the local average income. By taking a holistic approach, even such things as an agricultural training or learning beekeeping or COVID prevention, lessons integrate spiritual concepts that point participants to Jesus and his love for them. 
As a result, people are coming to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and are sharing his love with their families and neighbors. As you may recall, one of the core values of CHE is servant leadership. And as the CHE trainers share their lessons, they also share Jesus. They go on to disciple new believers and new churches are planted or existing churches grow as a result. Now, if you're like me and my husband, before getting involved with the ministry, most people, if not all, want to know that the money or time they invest is giving a good return. ROI Ministries looks for Christian organizations that fulfill this goal, and MAI has repeatedly been on their top 10 list of ministries that reaped significant outcomes with the finances entrusted them. As you can see, in 2019, there were a couple million people who heard the gospel and were in, instructed with the CHE lessons. The program cost worked out to just over $1 per person. Almost all of the laborers are self-funded or volunteers, so the vast majority of the expenditures are going directly into the I think we're frozen, are we? Oh dear. I think Kelly is frozen. Oh, it's Kelly that's frozen. Okay. Well, I think we're missing the last couple of slides here, but um, so basically it's, so what now, what can you do with what you've um, heard here? Certainly prayer is huge. Um, Basically, um, thinking about what have, what have you heard today? What have you learned today? And what can um, you take from any of those principles just in your own life and, and your own um, work with friends, neighbors, and ministry, whatever you're doing? Um, we also have trainings available if you're interested in learning more about community health evangelism and how to use it here in the US or around the world. Um, there's a number of... Um, Training's coming up. You can see these right there. There's a list. Um, and um, you're welcome to contact uh, Kelly or myself um, for more information. Uh, we would love to have you uh, stay online for questions and discussions right now. And then we can stay online till 11.08 or 10, something like that. But then after that, we need to leave for the next workshop to start on the same Zoom link. So you're welcome to join us um, at a Zoom link for our medical ambassadors booth if you wanna talk more. So thank you so much for joining us and unmute yourself and let's have some um, discussion. Also, if you wanna put a question in the chat, feel free to do that. So one issue I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about is uh, what if, um, how do you reach the village first? Like, do you look for a significant person to train first? Um, how does that happen? Yeah, I think that happens in a lot of different ways, but um, basically it's building relationships. So uh, uh, it kind of depends, you know, sometimes people hear about Che, they want that in their community, they're asking for that. Uh, sometimes a local person is wanting to reach out to their community, so they start to build relationships and, and um, start that communication there. If, if we were entering a totally new place in the world, just like anywhere, we'd start building relationships, getting to know people, um, connecting in that way. Sometimes uh, as the relationships are built, there may be an initial project done, like a school health screening or some kind of project where uh, like in Haiti, for example, we might do a screening of kids for um, physical growth. And maybe we identify out of that group, maybe we have, you know, 15% of the children are malnourished. So we talk to the community about this. And what do you think about that? Um, is that a concern for you? What do you want to do? And then they start evaluating that and thinking, okay, what steps do we want to take? And then they're asking for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does that help? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a little helpful. Yeah. 
I mean, I've, I've worked in India for a long time and um, I know they use midwives. And so I found like looking for the primary midwife and training her could be a, a great value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But what we're doing is more on the community level rather than um, in general, not so much on the professional level. Um, we have worked with some trainings for traditional birth attendants in some places. Um, but um, training community members on basic things, you know, first steps for emergencies and preventing complications, oh, right. that kind of thing. Yeah, I understand. <clears throat> Maggie, um, I've got a question about how, how uh, your organization handles going into a new country and into a new community. Let's say you're, you're brand new and you've got this area in, in the Republic of Congo, let's say, and you want to go into there uh, to try and start a ministry. How, what does that look like? How do, you, how do you start something like that? And where do you guys fit in? Yeah, you know, Victor, do you want to address that? My colleague Victor is on this um, with us as well. And uh, let's see if he's not. He's Yosemite over there. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm, I was trying to get Kelly back online. So, yeah, if you could repeat the question, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, let's say you're going into a, a, a new community, where, wherever that might be, with respect to the Republic of Congo, and you've got a, an area of the country that you've not been involved in before, what does it look like for you to go into a, a new region? How do you go about doing that? Um, who goes first? And then at what point would, for instance, Maggie be involved and where would she come into the picture? Yeah, so uh, we try to work at the most local level. So much of our work is actually done through local national partners. So either uh, organizations that are um, uh, local organizations in those particular countries, local churches. Um, so at some point, we try to engage these organizations and train them with the whole framework and approach. And as they're learning what it means to use community health evangelism or women's cycle of life um, and begin building these relationships with these communities, we will walk alongside with the organizations and coach them provide training as they are then walking with the, the local community. Um, uh, in some areas where uh, uh, an outside group might be the pioneers and there are no local partnerships, that, that's more difficult, um, but we would try to follow the same steps. Uh, but as, as you can imagine, it's multiple levels removed and as quickly as possible, we would try to then get a local uh, organization involved. But um, there's many ways that this could play out. Some of it, it's done through churches. Some of it's done through local ministries or, or non-government organizations. Uh, Paula mentioned in some places we, we do work through governments, through their local health departments or their uh, rural health uh, programs. Uh, but the, the, the principles, though, of, of working with the most local uh, 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 available um, group um, is, is what we always try to do to narrow the, the cultural distance and gap. Gotcha. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Great questions. Anybody else? I thought maybe I could share just a little bit. My name is Christine and um, I uh, am a volunteer at Medical Ambassadors, but I also work, I, I'm, I live in Modesto, California, and I also uh, work with a refugee resettlement agency um, as a volunteer. And um, we have a group of Afghan refugee ladies here. I just wanted to share a quick story of, of, um, of how, um, I'm pertaining to some of the questions asked about connecting in communities and, and uh, providing some of this education through uh, how, how do we reach into community groups. So um, 
five years ago, I, I talked with medical ambassadors about um, maybe um, providing health lessons for these Afghan refugee ladies who are uneducated, but who show, you know, who, uh, who come into our community and could really benefit from knowing more about um, many of the things that um, Paula and Kelly were talking about today. But um, when I talked to the Refugee Resettlement Agency, the Refugee Resettlement Agency said, what these ladies really need is English courses. <laughs> so for the last five years, a group of volunteers have been working with the ladies um, to learn English. But it happens that now we have a group where uh, the ladies are learning English, but they're also learning some cultural acculturation topics, basically topics that will help them adjust to life in the United States. And so now after these years of, of following the community's lead of what, what the Afghan ladies need, um, the opportunity has arisen for Paula and Kelly to now join up with uh, the Refugee Resettlement Agency and now present health lessons to the ladies who are very, very interested now in hearing about how to have healthy childbirth, how to, how to understand life cycles of women, how to have healthy relationships. So, so that's just one example of how, um, how this can work. We're excited about that too, because one of those side benefits of COVID, you know, one of the good out of the bad, because we're available to work with these refugee women. And, um, and also we're learning more and more about training online. So <laughs> I mean, getting also, people off the internet. Sorry about that. So I just, I just wanted to, to comment a little bit by, by sharing a little bit about medical ambassadors history and that that'll help you kind of get a, a picture of the, the multiplication, um, uh, emphasis of, of what we do. Um, about 30 to 35 years ago, when we first started using community health evangelism, um, almost all the coordinators within medical ambassadors that were trained um, were North Americans who were recruited, trained, and then they would travel out and then work with national partners. Um, over time, the, the national partners developed the, the capacity and, and moved into positions of leadership, and then they became trainers of trainers in their own countries. So today, 99.9% um, .9 of uh, the people that we work with are nationals working in their own countries. And as those ministries um, develop a, a passion and a burden to reach other areas in their, their countries, they will then work to work with partners within their own countries and bring the same type of training. Um, and in, in some places we've seen uh, multiplication from village to village so as uh, a, a village really begins to thrive and show transformation, their neighboring villages come to them and, and express interest to, to, to learn what's, what's happening. Can you share us what, what is going on? And, and then some of these villages will then become the trainers for their neighbors. So yeah, so the, the, the whole framework really is a framework of holistic discipleship and multiplication. So hopefully that gives you a, an idea of how it uh, spreads and how people do uh, bring it to remote areas in, in their countries. And we do work across organizations. It's not about medical ambassadors, it's about equipping whoever is interested. And so we love partnering with people, helping getting them going, training, all of that. And um, so if any of you are interested in that, please feel free to contact us, come to our booth. Um, we can also meet later because um, we, we love helping helping you um, do your ministry in the most effective way you can. So, yeah. If you haven't opened your chat, uh, you should do so. And there's a link in there to uh, record your attendance uh, on a Google form. My question is when is the next? Yes, please do that. Uh, just a few more minutes before we're going to get kicked off for the next session to start. So any other questions or you can meet us in our in our Zoom uh, booth. Um, also, did we put that in the chat? The link to that? Yeah, I think we did. Okay. So look at that chat and meet us meet us in there if you want to talk further. Yeah, I, I'd like to make one final comment. <clears throat> My wife and I uh, support Maggie, and um, hi Maggie. Uh, <laughs> Thank <yeah>. you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we, we've known each other for many years. Um, and I just appreciate, and I know she's just one of many, many that are part of the organization. We appreciate having the updates as far as what, uh, what type of ministry uh, Maggie's been involved in and you know, the specific type, type of uh, people that she's encountering. And uh, that is very helpful for those of us who are supporting you in prayer support and financial support. So uh, I just want to want to say thank you for that. And please continue so that we know what you're doing. Thank you. It is a joy to see God working around our world. He's working mightily in so many places and um, keeping up with that is challenging actually to see all he's doing. So in the midst of hard stuff. So I think it's an interesting story how, how Kelly came to meet you, Maggie. Maybe Kelly, you want to share your story? I, I can make it a really quick one. We we were um, at Mission Connection two years ago, and we had been working, watching for a couple of years to um, see where God wanted us to go. And my husband was doing the photography of all the booths and the um, the various things, and so he was going around taking pictures, and I was going around trying to find where God wanted us. And we went. I went over and talked to. Um, the people at medical ambassadors and just as they started talking about Che and 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 all that it just it, I was like okay this is it and then I started talking to Maggie and we both have the OB connection and and it was like okay we're this is it so I ran found my husband I'm like I found I found where we're supposed to go so you come over and, and talk to him and and we did and and we got started going really quite quite quickly um, into it thankfully. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been an amazing journey over the last two years. Yeah, it's been great to have them. Her husband, Vern, also is working with our Men Matter program and helping us with that and also does fantastic photography. So um, yeah, it's a well, it's great. 1108. We'll probably need to, to hop off so the next people can come on. But um, it was so uh, good to see you guys all and yeah thank you and if you want to come to the next section it's brian borger who was the guy who spoke um last night they were interviewing him last night and um he'll tell you about his work be really cool yeah thank you all blessings on your day bye-bye thank you thank bye. you bye bye-bye well done, thank, thank you. you. Bye, Keith.